Hey everyone, it's Pastor Scott Fielder and welcome to another installment of New Hope Lutheran Church in Agora Hills Faith 5 Friday video series. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. Um, thank you so much to everybody who's continued to um, reach out and say how much they're enjoying these videos. Um, again, if you want to keep receiving or start receiving um, the uh, notifications for when these things go live, make sure to scroll down and right next to the description box, there should be a red subscribe button, so you want to make sure to subscribe to the New Hope Agora Hills YouTube channel, and then you'll get notified about when new videos get posted, or if you're receiving our connection email every week on Fridays, <clears throat> you'll also get the link uh, embedded in that email as well, and that's an easy way for you to share it for anyone who you think uh, might uh, enjoy something like this or need something like this um, uh, at this time. Uh, as usual, uh, we will begin uh, with our first practice, which is sharing, which is our highs, lows, and favorite thing that we ate this week. Um, let's see, my um, high for this week is, uh, it's kind of been the first, you know, full couple of weeks where um, Nikki and I have been able to go out uh, into the world as um, fully vaccinated people, and so that's been um, uh, a very fun experience in getting to see folks, and so that was um, definitely a high for this week. We got to see a lot of friends. Um, and be with them after not seeing them for a very long time. Um, low for this week is that it's also really tiring. Um, you know, we just hadn't been doing that a lot um, over the past 15, 16 months, and so it's a little overwhelming, and so we're just kind of trying to recover a little bit. Um, so we're pretty tired and um, <clears throat> kind of feeling a little sluggish. Um, and then best thing we ate this week, um, yesterday I got to have a uh, meal I don't often get to have, which is lobster. Uh, so we had that uh, kind of like a surf and turf thing, and that was uh, easily one of the best things uh, that I've eaten this week. So now, um, either uh, if you've got some folks there that you're watching with, please make sure everybody gets a turn to share their high and their low and best thing they ate uh, for this week. Uh, or of course, if you're watching this by yourself, please write those things down and then share them um, you know, with someone uh, when you can and invite them to share those things too. So go ahead, uh, take a moment and pause the video and go ahead and do that. Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're going to move to our next practice, which is reading. And our scripture uh, for this time around is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, verses 21 to 43. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came and said, and fell, in at, and fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. She had endured much pain, and under many physicians she had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately, her hemorrhages stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. <clears throat> When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, of people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. They laughed at him, but then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with them and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha, come, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about, for she was 12 years old. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. Here ends the reading. Well, that was a long one, so we've got a lot to talk about in our next 
faith practice. And um, one thing I want you to think about is something very difficult that you had to learn at some point, something that, you know, took you a lot of tries, you know, to figure out how to do, not something you were just able to do, you know, easily um, right away. You know, maybe you're, maybe you can't remember this, but what about the time you had to learn how to tie your shoes, right? You didn't, probably didn't get it right the first time, but you practiced and practiced and then eventually you got it. I think another common one is like riding a bike. You know, that's one where everybody has a little bit of like a training period and then you eventually learn how to do that. And this is, um, you know, these are things that can be, um, you know, really difficult things. You know, that could be something like driving a car, but it can also be simple things. Like we had to learn when we were really, really little, you know, how to eat with a fork and a spoon and a knife, you know, correctly and how to walk and, you know, how to talk. But the good thing is, is that we don't give up when we are trying to learn these things, right? We kind of keep at it and we keep doing it until we've learned it. And in our scripture story, we see Jesus doing the same thing. He doesn't give up either. There's these, there's a number of times in our story when he could have easily quit. First, that father asking to Jesus to heal his daughter, not an easy thing to do, but he helps. Then going to the father's house proves difficult because there are so many people surrounding Jesus right there. He could have quit, but he keeps moving towards the father's house. During this journey, then a woman who is sick touches Jesus's clothes and is cured. And Jesus wants to know who that was. And the disciples were thinking, this is a weird question because there's so many people. It seems like everyone is touching you. And Jesus doesn't give up here either. He keeps asking who did it. And then the woman finally steps forward and says it was her. And then she, he then tells her that her faith has made her well and that she can go in peace. This is an important part of her healing. And Jesus knows this, which is why he doesn't you know, stop asking the question about who touched him. He wants to affirm her healing. While this was happening, then news arrives of another child who is uh, in need, and Jesus continues. You know, he doesn't give up. He eventually makes it to the house where this daughter is at, and then she's brought back to life. And the reason that Jesus does not give up in this story is because the first thing he does is he is focusing attention on God, and he keeps his attention there. And keeping that attention on God helps Jesus to continue receive to receive God's spirit and this healing, you know, love that God is showing it to all these people. And then Jesus is able to share that with others, even when things are not easy. You know, we live in a world where there's a lot of need for God's spirit and for a lot of healing, especially after this past year. There's so much need, in fact, that the world tends to never seem to be asking for enough of it. And sometimes it just feels like we should give up, which is why today's story is such a good reminder for us to continue to focus on God and on Jesus, who never gives up on us. And that's really good news for today, I think. For our, uh, uh, before we do our next, um, before we do our next faith practice, um, for an activity today, I want you to uh, kind of do something like what we talked about at the beginning of our talking portion. I want you to Think of something new that you could learn. Um, you know, maybe it's baking something. Maybe it's, um, you know, learning a couple of different words in a different language or trying to learn how to speak a different, you know, find something that is going to be a little bit challenging and challenge yourself. And if you're here watching this with lots of other people, maybe that's something you could do as a group so that maybe you're not trying to do it alone and you can help each other uh, do that. And it's, sometimes it's more fun to do things that way. So try and find something that is going to challenge you a little bit and to help you grow and then continue and don't give up on that and really try and follow through on uh, that learning that you do. So we'll move to our next faith practice, which is praying. So let's uh, fold our hands and let's bow our heads and close our eyes and let's, uh, let's, um, let's begin to end our time with a word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you so much for Jesus and the fact that he never gives up on us, no matter how bad things seem, no matter maybe how distant we think Jesus is from us, if we can't feel you know, your presence or his presence, we can always know that Jesus will always be looking for us. He will always be uh, pursuing us and uh, loving us and helping us to heal uh, when things aren't going so great and to help us to share that love that we get from you with others. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now for our last practice, our blessing. Remember, you want to do a sign of the cross, either on another person's forehead or on the back of their hand, whatever is comfortable for them. And you want to say these words as you make the sign of the cross. Child of God, Jesus will never give up on you. Child of God, Jesus will never give up on you. I hope you take those words with you this week, and we'll see you next time. Bye.